God bless y'all. My name is Brother Jonathan Kayo. I'm going to give you this word. This word is about the knowledgeable Christian. This word is about the Pharisees that are in the body of Christ. Okay. On the 21st of June, 2017, I had a dream that I was talking to a sister in Christ. This sister in Christ I'm going to call Christian sister number one. So I was talking to a sister in Christ who didn't have an understanding of how the end times are and how close it is. And she could not see in what hearts we are to have towards them. And when I talked to her, she listened, but she did not explain or do anything for me to realize she understood. And she and I moved on. Okay. Now, when I said um, that in this dream, I was able to see what hearts we ought to have towards them, I mean this type of a Christian, the Christian sister number one, or the Christian brother, you know what I mean? But because this is a dream, I'm going to say the Christian sister number one because she is the starring role, okay? Now, um, so I talked to her, she listened, but she did not explain or do anything for me to realize she understood, and she and I moved on, okay? This was, um, this, uh, I don't know, I think she's a tie-in lady or whatever, okay? She works at my job, um, anyway, and, um, and she actually is a professing Christian, and she's, um, yeah, she's a professing Christian. Now, and I talked to another person who knew doctrine and everything, but was indifferent towards the other sister. And I told her, meaning this new person, this other person, which is going to be Christian number two, the Christian sister number two. Okay, so I'm talking about the Christian sister number two right now. And I talked to another person, which is Christian sister number two, who knew doctrine and everything, but was indifferent towards the other sister, which is Christian number one, sister number one. And I told her, I reached out to her, and she spoke disdain of her, meaning Christian sister number two spoke disdain of Christian sister number one, as if she was not worthy of speaking to, to anymore. So she spoke disdain of her as if she was not worthy of speaking to anymore because of her lack of knowledge regarding the end times. As me and this lady talked, we were on a spaceship. So this lady, meaning Christian sister number two, so as me and the Christian sister number two continued to talk, we were on a spaceship. And, and you know, and, um, and it and it had a convertible this spaceship had a convertible top to it and i saw the knowledge of god we were in outer space okay we were in outer space um in the expanse and i saw um the knowledge of god and i saw i was given sight to the knowledge of god and here it is in regards to surfaces I was given sight, insight, to the knowledge of God regarding surfaces, okay, regarding surfaces. And I saw ceramics and clay and skin, meaning the skin of human beings, mankind, and the skin of a peach, okay, a fruit, a peach. And I saw God's view of things regard, regarding the surfaces of objects and how they were categorized. He spoke of the surfaces of skin in the same breath as ceramics. And when I say he spoke of the surfaces of skin, I mean the skin of mankind, man who was created in the image of God. He spoke of the surfaces of 
of skin. In the same breath as ceramics and clay and the skin of fruit, namely a peach. Showing me his mind and God opened this up as we were on this huge spaceship that had a convertible top and the things I mentioned as far as surfaces were all displayed to us within outer space. So as I was looking at these things that were surfaces, this, you know, the skin of, of mankind, the skin of the peach, ceramics, and clay, as I was seeing this, I was literally seeing this in outer space. Okay? I was literally seeing this in outer space, like from the convertible spaceship, you know, and I was looking upon it. You know, you know how the space looks, the black, the blackness of space, which is like, you know, pretty much like outer darkness. Okay. And then you'll see, uh, wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. And then you'd see, you know, um, the stars. Okay. Now I'm not going to say too much, but that wow probably did something to some of you. And I'm not going to go no further, but anyway, um, and you know what he talks about the outer darkness. Okay. He was talking to the Pharisees. But anyway, um, those were the ones who were um, of the kingdom of God. He said the children of the kingdom of God will be cast into outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Okay, so anyway, outer darkness. Outer darkness. Okay, like outer space. So anyway, um... So, uh, so we was in this convertible top and the things I mentioned as far as surfaces were all displayed to us within outer space. And he revealed to me this woman's heart. I don't know who this woman is, but I'm going to call her the knowledgeable Christian sister. Okay. That's what I'm going to call her, the knowledgeable Christian sister. And I asked her, has she reached out to this sister who did not have our knowledge? But she said no. And she mentioned how her church is not understanding this doctrine either. Now, when I say she mentioned how her church is not accepting this knowledge either, um, or how her church is not understanding this doctrine either. Excuse me, not accepting, not understanding this doctrine either, okay? Because keep in mind, remember I said earlier when I talked about Christian sister number one, I said I talked to her, she listened, but she did not explain or do anything for me to realize she understood and she and I moved on, okay? So this is in regards to people not understanding, you understand? Some people would love to understand, but they just don't understand. Okay. And I asked her, uh, has she reached out to this sister who did not have our knowledge? But she said no. And she mentioned how her church is not understanding this doctrine either. Okay. Now she's talking about, I'm talking to Christian sister number two still. And Christian sister number two was talking about how Christian sister number one's church still didn't understand also. Okay. So she's saying the Christian sister number one didn't understand. And she's also saying Christian sisters church group that she affiliates herself with, that she congregates herself with, also does not have our knowledge, meaning our knowledge, meaning my knowledge and Christian sister number two's knowledge. Because Christian sister number two is knowledgeable of the end times. She's not false. She's not, you know, misleading or anything like that. Okay. Then I said nothing, but in my silence, okay, so I said nothing after she said, because I asked her, I said, did you um, reach out to this Christian sister about, you know, how, you know, she, I said, and I asked her, has she reached out to this Christian sister who did not have our knowledge? But she said no. And she mentioned how her church is not understanding this doctrine either. Then I said nothing. 
Now, see, let me let me pause real quick. This reminds me of um, my brother Roy, who I used to preach with, not the Christian Sister Number Two, but it reminds me of how my brother Roy, who I used to preach with, who's currently guilty, but you know, praise God for the knowledge that he has been given from God, and pray for him. I pray that he turns. But he would always say, Jonathan, people who do not um, tell people about Jesus are shutting the door, the gates of heaven on other people. Because I asked her, I said, does she have our knowledge? And she said, no, and her church does not either. So it's like, okay, so why are you telling me this? Like, because you're talking to the choir right now. You need to go tell her. And a lot of Christians like talking to other Christians. But we don't like talking to sinners because that creates controversy. And we also don't like talking to Christians who we know that are indifferent towards us in ways they're not like us and we don't want to talk to them because they're here and we're here and i've become like that in my past but i've always been somebody to at least test the waters and we have to be one of those kind of christians to at least test the waters to see if we should wipe off our feet to see if these people are dogs okay and pigs um but anyway, then I said nothing after she said that her church doesn't, you know, have this kind of knowledge anyway. So it's it's not bad for you to not walk with people who don't agree, because how can two walk together unless they be in agreement? But if these people refuse and outright, outrightly refuse to be in disagreement, like, that's the people who God is talking about. He's not talking about those people who just don't quite get it. They don't agree because they're not trying to walk in blind faith, but they just don't get it. You see what I'm saying? And they're and they're still open to hearing you. you see what I'm saying? Um, anyway, so then I said nothing, but in my silence, I heard the Holy Ghost tell me that He cares that this woman knows, meaning Christian sister number one. For whatever reason, she does not know is not known to me. But the example of this woman is not an outwardly radical professor of Christ, meaning this real woman that he's showing me as an example, okay, because I know who this woman is, okay, she works at my job, and, and, and she's not a radical professor of Christ, and, is, and she is politically correct, and, it, and, and she is professional, and a lot of times these professional Christians who are politically correct, they're not radical for Jesus. They're not really radical for Jesus. But anyway, um, so so God showed me his love for her and her church she fellowships with. And I saw how they re how they were revealed some things later by him. So this is to understand this scripture. You know, um, Philippians, I'm going to go there in the book of Philippians. You know, some people get it later. You know, um, it's one of my favorite scriptures. Philippians 3.15, it says, Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. So, if anything, it says, and if in anything ye be otherwise minded, meaning if there is anything that you don't agree with because you cannot um, understand these matters and your mind thinks this way, it says God shall reveal even this unto you, okay? Now we have to have an open heart for these people that God can reveal these things. These aren't the Joe Osteens that I'm speaking of. I'm not talking about the Kenneth Copelands. I'm not talking about the people who, you know, desire wickedness. These people who I'm talking about are not necessarily zealous for Christ, but even though they're not zealous for Christ, these are the people who didn't know that they had to be crazily zealous for Christ. They just thought that, you know, I believe in Jesus. You know, I stopped practicing sin. Um, you know, and, you know, uh, I go to work and I take care of my family, you know, 
I just go to work. I take care of my family. I didn't. But see, the thing is, yes, my people perish for lack of knowledge because they rejected the truth. But see, the thing is, you might say, okay, well, Jonathan, um, there are people who reject the truth who fit this degree. And I'll say, okay, man, you're right. But I will say this also. There's people who reject the truth in ways where they're not outrightly rejecting God's truth, but they're just not praying and reading. So when you're not praying and reading, remember what I always have shared with you guys in the past uh, in Hebrew, you know, it says uh, reject, hate means reject, and love means to choose, okay? In the Greek, hate means to love less, okay? So whatever you're choosing, you know, that's what you love more, okay? Whatever you hate, it's what you love less, okay? And reject in the Hebrew. So these people reject him because they're not seeking him. But the thing is, is that some people, you know, they give themselves credit for seeking him. And they, they, they're doing, to their knowledge, the best that they can. Not what Christ says is the best that they can. And I, I, I don't like these people. I don't, I don't take towards these kind of people who give themselves a lot of credit and they're saying that they do the best that they can. However, God can still work with these people if they have an open heart to the truth and to growing and things like that. They might not want to grow in this area because they don't agree with what you say because they're in blind faith. They don't. God does not want us to walk in blind faith. When I say blind faith, I'm talking about, you know, I only believe in Jesus because you told me about Jesus, not because I have a knowledge of Jesus for myself. That's blind faith that he does not like. To him who does this unto him, it is sin, okay? If it's not by faith, it is sin, okay? And so, you know, because without faith, you cannot please him. He is not pleased if it's not by faith. And so, um, he's, he's, he's not pleased. Okay, so, uh, so, um, okay, moving forward. So, so I saw how they revealed they were revealed some things later by him, meaning Elohim, Jesus, Jehovah, God. In this, God showed me his love for those others right off. Now, this is the, this is the, the kind of like an oxymoron, perplexed situation type thing. Because this is the bulk of Christianity. The bulk of the American Christians and the Christians in this world are this Christian number one. You understand? So we're in a weird time that I'm trying to explain and I want to really get to you. The majority of Christians are the Christian number one. Go to work, come home, chill with the family, look at TV or look at online things all day. You know, don't seek God through prayer and reading. Go to church. Maybe read a scripture here and there ever so often, okay? Um, and they do not practice sin, okay? I'm talking about the majority of Christians who really are Christians. I'm not talking about people who are just professing only. But I'm talking about people who actually said, you know what? I'm going to go out of my way and deny myself in certain areas, keyword, certain areas, and pick up this cross, not my cross I'm going to pick up this cross because I like that that one's pink and it has glittery gold on it and it sprinkles around the edges so I'm going to pick up that cross and I'm going to follow after this Jesus Okay. now we know that this Jesus is there's only one Jesus Christ but however the Jesus that that they um, retain in their mind that they want to receive this you know this open love Jesus and guess what Jesus is looking down at these people like, yes, I am Jesus, and yes, you do know of me, but you need to come higher, okay? That's what he So this is even actually becoming to be a rebuke, and I didn't purposely do this because I don't like to just pass out rebukes, but this is also a rebuke to those Christians 
who believe that, you know, Christianity, and I don't even like to call this Christianity, it's the way, but they like to believe that the way is this formal, cordial, calm, relaxed, mundane, every Sunday, every Wednesday, shoot the breeze, relax, buy everything you want, you know, at, 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 at the mall, and, you know, and, um, you know, look at, look at, uh, some, some, you know, some reruns to, uh, you know, uh, 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 power or, or empire or, you know, I mean, whatever, you know what I'm saying, stuff like that, and I'm not here to, to mock, you know what I'm saying, because I know how you want to be comfortable sometimes, you, you know, I know things, things are like, you want to relax, you want to chill, but, but the Lord is saying, you know, you're not picking up your cross, and you're, you, you know, but the Lord is also saying, I also have patience for you. Because that's what long-suffering is. Long-suffering isn't a quick write-off because you don't understand this doctrine. Not because you reject this doctrine, but because you don't understand this doctrine. Key word. And the bulk of Christians in America who go to hell all the time regularly, which they do, are those who um, just didn't think in their mind that it took that much. They just didn't think that they had to fast. They didn't think that they had to stay in a word. They didn't think that they had to. They thought that all they really had to do was just be nice, be kind, you know, be non-confrontational, be nice. And then, you know, just um, just go to heaven because Jesus loves us. You know, you know, every so often tell people that I am a Christian, but don't tell people that they have to believe in Jesus. And, you know, just tell people I'm a Christian and that like that's my way of preaching to you saying, oh, yeah, I'm a Christian. Like, that's my way. And then we could talk about, you know, salami and, you know, um, Italian food. You know, or we could talk about, you know, um, pig skin and, and, you know, stuff like that. All I needed to tell you is that I'm a Christian. I just witnessed to you. I'm a Christian. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I'm a Christian, you know. So so that that's like, that's their way of evangelizing. You know, just trust in the Lord. Finished. You know what I mean, um, so anyway, uh. In this, God showed me, but he still has love for them. Because God's love is beyond our desire for what he, we want his love to be. We want his love to not necessarily always be what it is. Like, God loved Hitler. I mean, uh, but he also hated who Hitler became. Okay, so that's why he loves and hates. Um, so it says, because uh, you go to, um, you go to, uh, Psalms 5.5 5, and you see that he hates and then you go to you know John 3.16 you see that he loves okay so uh, and so it says uh, so so a lot of us you know in this God showed me his love for those others right off not that we ought to hound those with truth but not have a heart that there is no hope because others do not understand on our timeline in spite of the time frame we have as of now. Um, now, I want to say this in regards to the uh, the Obama type people, okay, because I did make a dream. I did give a dream of a prophecy that the Lord gave me. A mighty word. This was around the time when I was coming to the knowledge of the truth that Obama was the Antichrist. Because even in that dream, where it talks about two categories, I didn't even know that Obama was the Antichrist at that time. The Lord had to take me a long way, <laughs> humiliate me, have me look silly and foolish, to finally let me know that Obama was the Antichrist. And, you know, he showed me signs, but he didn't, like, give me that knowing until he showed me that Obama's face was changing into a leopard. Okay. And, um, and they were speaking about Pergamos. It was a man of God in the background, a young man of God preaching against uh, the Antichrist and, and preaching against Pergamos and um, that's when I realized that uh, Obama was the Antichrist and not even right away when I made that video but more so like after I started to like you know meditate on that video you know because that video was something that I had to look back at and I had to you know meditate on what God spoke and you know, because I knew that it was urgent for all the other reasons, but for God to show me that he was turning into the beast, you know, after being told that, you know, Obama's not the Antichrist, 
because he wasn't at the time and who was going to turn into that was very um it was it was it was it was very profound to me and it was mind boggling to me so you guys got a chance to see a glimpse of you know my um my life in this prophetic call which is kind of um unique because you have to hold on to what God tells you not what God tells him and her you know what God tells you because you know what you heard and you be obedient because you don't want to be that Christian or that disciple of Jesus rather what I like to say who's walking down like the prophet walking down the uh the way and you heard what God said and somebody else who's a prophet comes and tells you to do something else and then you do it and then you know you suffer for it and you die. Okay, that's not pure. It's not cool. You obey God. You obey God. So anyway, um, I say all this to say that is that um, <sighs> okay, you know, this this whole thing about um, you know, knowing the will of God. I think I lost myself. Oh, back to Obama. Okay, so the two categories. Thank you, Holy Ghost. <laughs> The two categories. Okay, so the two categories. In that dream where I've explained the two categories, yes, it sounded black and white. Yes, it was black and white. However, you know, in its black and whiteness, um, we don't know how it's going to come to be in its fruition. You know what I mean? We don't know entirely how it's going to come to be. But yes, there are two categories. Those who know who Obama is and those who do not know who Obama is. And if you know who Obama is, then you fit this category. And if you don't know who Obama is, you fit that category. Okay. Now, however, some people will come into the knowledge of the truth. Even Jesus said, "Late." He said, "He said there are, he said there are um, sheep that I have that are not of you." Know, that are not of the fold or something like that. And they're coming, they're going to come in, okay? He was talking about the Gentiles, how they're going to come in in due time. But he came <laughs> for the lost sheep of Israel. You know what I mean? God is something, man. He's funny. I mean, not funny in a, in a way where I'm trying to speak against God. But, um, okay, so check it out. It's just that we got to be careful because God will embarrass you. All right? If you ain't careful, and, and to be embarrassed is to be like a Pharisee. You will definitely get embarrassed. Do not think of yourself more highly than you ought to. You know, trust me, I've, I've been there. You know what I'm saying? But um, I always try to keep an open heart towards people. But uh, yeah, I've been there. Um, you know, I'm the kind of person where I'm like Jesus. If you save him, you save him. If you don't, you don't. I prayed. I did my part. I'm moving on. I mean, because you know, you got to keep moving on. I'm gonna make a video. I'm gonna give you guys this video. Can people be saved because of prayer? Okay, we need to really talk about this. Look for more videos. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna teach us. I love you guys are coming. Okay, now check this out. He says I'm gonna. I'm gonna start at verse 19. Whosoever, therefore, okay, this is Matthew 5:19. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, and shall teach men so. He shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Now dig this. He didn't say, you won't be called in heaven. He said, you'll just be called the least. Okay. Now verse 20. For I say unto you, that except now, this is something different. That except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Ye have heard that it was said, okay, so now he's going into the whole um, commandments, the Ten Commandments and things of that nature. These people, they had a lot of knowledge. The Pharisees were the teachers of the law. You understand? They were the teachers of the law. Many of us on YouTube, many of us out here in the streets, Many of us in the body of Christ who are in, in the congregation, um, in the temples, we teach the law, okay? 
we are evangelists, we're deacons, we're ministers, we're, 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 we're preachers, we're pastors, we're prophets, we're prophetess, okay? Um, you know, we let people know the law of God. Um, we teach people the law of God according to knowledge of Jesus Christ, according to the doctrine of Jesus Christ. And we have to be very careful because if we're not careful, you know, we can fall into this Pharisee, um, haughty-minded state that does not regard people as souls, but as just, you know, people who actually, you know, are just getting on our nerves. We don't want to deal with them. I ain't got to put up with this and all that kind of crap. Okay, meanwhile, God puts up with us. <laughs> and it says that we're to bear each other's burden. It says we're supposed to be long-suffering. You know? And these are people who are not contentious. They just, you know, they're not purposely being contentious. They're not purposely being um, uh, anything. These are people who just don't understand. Okay, so Acts 15, 5. And I'm not talking about people who are disagreeing um, and wanting to debate. I'm not talking about these people who, you know, outrightly just don't want to agree. Some people who are sincere, they don't agree. Um, we're still supposed to be patient with them. Okay, we're supposed to reach them, be patient with them, move on. But at least, what did I say to her? I said, did you speak to her? She said no. And she felt disdain for her. That means that she feel like she didn't she didn't need to be regarded as someone who needs to be spoken to because she saw that she didn't have this knowledge and you're not going to get this knowledge it's like we're in a club okay but there rose up certain of the sects of the pharisees which believed saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of moses okay now they were of the sect okay of the Pharisees, but they believed. That's speaking about uh, Jesus Christ. They were believers, okay? They were believers of Jesus Christ, but they were still Pharisees, okay? So, what is this saying? This is saying that, you know, we have to be very careful because we can have that same characteristic as believers, but we put people away from Jesus okay we need to draw people to Jesus they felt as though in their scenario in the book of Acts 15 5 they felt as though these people need these 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 people need the knowledge of Moses they need to understand what Moses has come to do for us what Moses has done they need to know what Moses has taught us we need to understand and not usurp the law of Moses. You know, let's not believe in Jesus Christ and usurp the law of Moses now. Okay, that's what they're saying. Let's not honor Jesus Christ as Lord only without usurping the law, without without uh, embracing the law of Moses. We need to embrace the law of Moses. That's what they're saying, okay? You guys see these people out here. They dress in long garments. You know what I'm saying? They look the part. They look like, you know, monks. You know what I'm saying? They, 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 you know, they even, they even, they even are real believers of Jesus Christ. They're not coming in the name of Moses. Uh, there's many people out here. They're not coming in the name of Moses. But because of your character, your garments are shameful. Okay. And you are immodest. Okay, I was just telling my wife this. I said, you know, and now it was, this wasn't a rebuke to her or anything like that, but I was just sharing this with her because we were um, fellowshipping. And I was saying to her, I said, you know, uh, Adam and Eve. I said, wait, honey. I said, this is the Holy Ghost because we were having a conversation. And I said, honey, this is the Holy Ghost. I said, let me, let me, let me, let me say this real quick. And I said, by way of the Holy Ghost, because the Holy Ghost said, that immodesty is Adam and Eve when they were sinning, okay? When they sinned, now, that same immodesty was not immodesty when they 
did not sin. Listen close to all my knowledgeable Christians. Okay. When Adam and Eve did not sin, yet naked, the scripture says that they were naked and not ashamed. It shows us. But then when they ate of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, and they retained this knowledge and they they obtained the knowledge and they were like little gods, then they became immodest. Then their same um the knowledge that they had, all this knowledge that they had, they became guilty and they became immodest. They were once not having all this knowledge and they didn't even they weren't even immodest. Okay? These are the reasons why in the book of Jeremiah it talks about how when you have a lot of wisdom it it it, it, it creates the heart to lament. Okay. You understand? It causes the heart to to lament through much wisdom is much sorrow through much knowledge in this sense of saying the word wisdom through much knowledge is much sorrow okay as much sorrow you'll be judged in a higher category you want to be like god okay so now you get to whom is given much is required so now you got to wear these clothes because you've been given too much knowledge and i didn't even tell you to have this knowledge you understand this is a, re a rebuke to the Pharisees who are in the body of Christ. They're believers, okay? Now that you've gotten so great and you've gotten so knowledgeable and you've gotten so um, high-minded, be very careful of how you carry around your knowledge. Be very, you know, my brother Roy, and I'm not saying this to brag, but I just want you to learn from my example. And I have to get out of here because I'm a married man now. <laughs> but but um, I want to share this with you. My brother Roy used to say to me, Jonathan, you know, you're humble. Like he would, he know me face to face. He knows me for real, for real. Some people think I'm arrogant, but he really knows me. And he said, Jonathan, you're, you're humble. And I said, why you say that? And he was like, because you don't, and I don't like to call myself humble, but he said, let another man praise you, not your own mouth. But I'm sharing this with you so you can learn. Please just hear me, because this could be you. You might be this humble person also. Okay? You might be this person, or you might need to learn. He said, you're humble because you have all this knowledge about all these other books of the early churches. And you have all this knowledge, but you don't put this on people. Because we used to go to church together. Me and Brother Roy, we had our own separate churches. We would also go to different churches together. God would call us to different churches. You know what I'm saying? We were just within the body of Christ in a very unique way. I mean, we'd be in the streets together. We'd be in the Spanish churches together. Uh, we'd be, I mean, like, we just got, we, we just moving. We were just all over. And he said, you don't trample upon people with this. You see what I'm saying? It's kind of like how, okay, if I can trample upon you because you don't know who Obama is. Now, if you're a pastor, woe unto you. Because <laughs> this is kind of like telling on yourself because he's the wolf. He's the leopard. Okay, King David, he was killing these beasts, providing safety for the sheep. How are you providing safety for the sheep? Okay. However, you know, um, if you're just a lay person, because everybody's not called to be all these things, okay? These great statuses that people want to call great, okay? You know, because there is much given and much is required out of you. So, yeah, it is to a degree great because yeah, you'll be judged harsher um, since you want to be, you know. But just hear my heart right now because... We cannot take all this knowledge that we have, okay, and use it as a means of um, being uh, 
hierarchies in Christ, being these monarchs in Christ, you know, and these, and, 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 and you know, because it talks about, you know, it talks about in the body of Christ, the weaker, the weaker, um, more, uh, what's the word, more, um, uh, I can't think of the title right now, how they spoke it, but, um, it's that body in the member of Christ, that bot, that member in the body of Christ. It says nay. It says uh, and the and the and the Eve cannot say unto okay, this First Corinthians twelve twenty one and the eye can I said the Eve, and the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet. I have no need of you. Nay, much more of those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable. Okay, that's the word I was looking at. Upon these we bestow more abundant honor and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. To be honest with you, I'm going to just rebuke you right now even further. A lot of y'all, if it wasn't for y'all looking at YouTube, you wouldn't have the knowledge you have anyway. Y'all ain't been putting in a, a, a lot of um, groundbreaking time with the Lord. You ain't ever, you don't know what it's like to pray all day. And I ain't talking about with a church congregation. I'm talking about on your knees praying. You don't know what it's like. You have no knowledge of that. You don't know what it's like. So you really have to be careful how you look at people and how you look down at people. Because you, you, you are those people. You just know how to hit a YouTube button. You just know how to hit click. You know what I'm saying? You just know how to look on the side and see all these other videos and just, you know, you know, click. But you don't know what it's like to fast for days and days and days and days, night and day, being just all because you're so hungry for God only, only, you know what I mean? Only because you're just so on fire for God only, you know what I mean? No, you just been clicking videos. And I ain't talking about fasting and doing other stuff. I'm talking about no giving God undivided attention all day. You don't know what that's like. So 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 woe unto you, because you're not better than anybody else. This person, you're only the only reason why you know more. The only reason why Christian sister number two, I'm not even going to say Christian sister number two is that, but I'm going to say this: if if you're this Christian sister number two and you fit this category because of, of, of your clicking fingers. And you're always knowledgeable of stuff. The only reason why you know this is because you got a computer, a laptop, easy access, the prophecy of Daniel coming to pass about how knowledge will increase, Google, all this stuff. You're not waiting on God and seeing what God has to say. He's not interpreting your dreams. You're just giving your dreams and uploading your dreams. You're not interpreting your dreams because of the Holy Ghost giving them to you. You probably don't even have the Holy Ghost. Many, many of you don't even have the Holy Ghost. You're super knowledgeable. And you look down at others who do See what I'm saying? You fit this category. You don't have the Holy Ghost, but the evidence is speaking in tongues. And you're looking at these people, you're looking down at them, and you're not even measuring up, and you're just like Christian sister number one. But but you just are interested in looking at Christian uh uh criteria. <laughs> you just you just desire to look at Christian entertainment. You just desire to look at Christian prophets and prophetess and teachings. But when is the last time you've spent personal time with the Lord when is the last time you've lamented in prayer for people when is the last time you have sought the Lord hard with all and loved the Lord with all your heart soul and strength as scripture says anything else is like you know a little leaven is leavening the whole lump you know what I mean so you know there's no really justifying yourself in this and I want you to feel this I want you to understand this I want you to feel this completely because you're just as guilty and um there's no this 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 is this is not good okay this is not good uh also look at the outward the outward notice how god was speaking about the outward god is not concerned okay he's looking at you like okay i'm showing you i'm taking you to outer space okay and i'm showing you the outer <laughs> you know what i'm saying he took you to outer space and showed you the outer you understand and we even had the convertible, which is also an outer. We were in the outer of the of the of the of the um 
a convertible is always exposing what's on the inside. You understand? And we were in the outer. Okay, now you're exposed and you're out. You see what I'm saying? In the outer of a spaceship. You see, but God, He sees that these people still have a heart where so they can be reached. That's the focus. These people can be reached. This is the reason why you have to humble yourself. Some people can't be reached. And then also you have Christians who think that some people always can be reached. Everybody can't always be reached. You understand? There's certain people who just can't be reached anymore because God has hardened their hearts. And once God starts to harden your heart and use you as a vessel for his glory, but but in the process of you being a vessel for his glory, you're not going to hear uh, well done, good and faithful servant, and you're going to be cast in the outer darkness with a good weeping and gnashing teeth, or in hell, you're going to be completely uh, given over. Okay. Uh, as they say, um, they deliver to Satan. Okay. Maybe you might be able to be delivered to Satan and, you know, get the grace that the man got in 1 Corinthians. Uh, chapter 5 because they spoke about them later in 2 Corinthians I believe uh, chapter um, let me see Okay, chapter uh, 2 Corinthians 2.11. Okay, so that same man, in 1 Corinthians 5, he was rebuked. In 2 Corinthians 2, you know, he was restored. So, you know, I want you guys to really understand, though, that uh, be very careful with how we uh, carry our knowledge around. Um, more so with how we carry our knowledge around with those who um, desire to uh, be open and are not contentious you know what I mean however you know what I mean when you start to smear in their face you know how much they don't know um, and these people and God has shown this in the matter of like okay listen <laughs> this, this reason why this word is so powerful is because he's not even like tripping the way we are about how they don't have regard for the end times. Okay? He is not tripping the way we are in this context about how they don't know the end times like we know the end times. See? And he's saying that he'll still reveal. Okay. Um, so. It says. It says. Um, I had a dream that I was talking to. A, okay. This was given to me on the 21st of this month. June 2017. I had a dream. I was Okay. It says. Understanding of how the end times. Are. These people don't have an understanding of how the end times are. And how close it is. And she could not see. And God is still long suffering. You see that? They don't even have an understanding. And God is like, you know, He's still speaking. Philippians 3:15. Like there's still time. Like there's still an opportunity. You understand? So if, the, if He can be like that, then we ought to be like that. Should, is it, did, should we still beseech brethren and urge brethren? Of course we should. But even in that, it's not to. Uh, categorize you like okay you're over here and you know no categorize the people who you see God is categorizing because they hate God okay so be very careful with your mouth be very careful okay uh, and when I say they hate God I mean because they hate God because they choose not to uh, follow his way they reject but anyway God bless you man I hope this word uh, edified you um, it edified me, um, you know, and uh, yes, the knowledgeable Christian, that knowledgeable Christian, okay, 
the Lord is saying that if your righteousness does not exceed beyond that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you understand? If we don't exceed beyond the scribes and the Pharisees, what does he say? You won't enter into the kingdom of heaven. I just had to make sure we're in the kingdom of God. Yeah, you want to inherit the kingdom of heaven. So, um, yes. And there are Pharisees that converted. There are Pharisees that believed, yet still wanted circumcision. Okay, so don't worry. Don't, don't, find, don't look at your righteousness as an outer appearance of garments. Okay? Don't look at your righteousness as that. Because God spoke about that as the Pharisees, that they looked at their outer appearance as their righteousness. You understand? He said they were outwardly um, whitewashed tombs, but they looked good. He said they cleaned the outside of the cup. That's that ceramic. You understand? That's that ceramic. They cleaned the outside of the cup, but the inside was filthy. He said it's not what defi. He said was it's not what's uh, on the outside that defiles a man. Okay. Now, look at Adam and Eve. Look at Adam and Eve. You see what the Holy Spirit is saying? Because this is the doctrine that Jesus is giving to us, the Pharisees. That's why I have to te teach you this. You're going to hear a lot about, I'm going to tell you honestly, you're going to hear a lot about me talking about um, Pharisees. You're going to hear a lot about me talking about um, uh, legalism because this is the time to, to be free from this because you know um, you won't be able to inherit the kingdom of heaven and you'll be you'll be doing a great service to God you'll be making a lot of people you'll be part of the reason why a lot of people go to heaven and you won't be able to because you know you became overly righteous and in in you know as the book of Ecclesiastes speaks saying don't become overly righteous which is no righteousness as a, at all. It's just that you're doing too much, and now you're out of God's will. And they're being, they're speaking in this context of, you know, don't be overly righteous. But they're basically just saying, you're, you're doing too much, and you're not even God's not in this anymore. Okay. I said, don't destroy yourself. Don't be overly righteous and destroy yourself. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You know what I'm saying? That's deep. That's deep. Let me look that up. Let me look that up. Let me look that up. That's crazy. That's crazy. Hello, Koyada Mashata. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Ecclesiastes 7.16. Ecclesiastes. I hope I quoted that right. Okay. I got some deep stuff to share with y'all. Yeah. Be not righteous over much. Neither make thyself over wise. Why shouldest thou destroy thyself? You might be like, I fast, I pray, I do this, I do that. That's how the Pharisees talk. You know what I'm saying? And they just can't see themselves. They can't see themselves. You know, you know, you know. Like, 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 like. I mean, Paul... He became like all that he made. One some. You got a lot of people, man, they don't know how to reach. They don't even know how to like identify. I ain't going to say identify. Forgive me. They don't know how to sympathize and come to that little ghetto boy. See what I'm saying? You know, that little uh, ghetto girl. that They don't. They can't do it. See what I'm saying? They got to come looking like a Hebrew Israelite. They just can't reach them. And these people can't receive them because they're looking at you like... You coming to me, man, you know, I, one time I told my brother Roy, man, when we used to preach, I want to preach with a suit on. You know, I said, I want to preach with a suit on because I really just wanted to do it. And I, did, I never did it before. Well, not purposely. But, um, because I'm not a suit guy. I'm not a suit guy, but I, always, I wanted to have an excuse to wear them. And, you know, I don't know. I guess I was being churchy. But, uh, you know, he said, you know, when you... He said this to me. He said, you know, I was told, he, said, he told me that he was told by another that, you know, when you, uh, when you reach the loss, like, you don't, you don't try to look out like you're shining on them. 
You know what I mean? You try to kind of like, um, I'm not saying dress like a hooker if you're preaching to hookers. I'm not saying dress like a thug if you're preaching to thugs. But what I'm saying is, there's nothing that was comely about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ did not, he didn't adorn himself in, you know, these garments, you know, where, 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 where people can identify him and say, oh, that's Jesus. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, you know, Jesus just was a guy in the crowd, but that guy was God. <laughs> He's the son of man. He's the son of God. He is God. Okay. John 858. But, um, but you know, there was nothing about his stature that drawed us to him, you know. And he even rebuked people talking about the outward garments, and the outward. When he talked about his his cousin John, he said, "What was you looking for? You know, a man with soft garments. You know, you know." He said, "Those are people who are in the king's houses. You know, what are you what are you looking for? Like, no, we're here to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know." We're not, we're, you know, we're here to wash your feet. <laughs> you know what I mean? We're here to uh, serve you and give you a bunch of fish and bread and, and rebuke you of sin and, and walk, call you into holiness and righteousness. See what I'm saying? And, and outwardly, we look like you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you was to see me walking down the street, you would not think that I was a Christian. My wife told me, she said, my wife said, I wouldn't think, she said, you're confusing she said because people, but she didn't say this in a negative way, but it's just that because I don't dress like a thug. I don't dress like a thug. It's just that my clothing, nothing stands out about me. See what I'm saying? And nothing should stand out about you that should make attention draw to you in a sense where people say, they got to be a Christian. See what I'm saying? Because people even think that that is what righteousness is. Like, I'm going to wear this long dress, and I'm a Christian. i wear this long dress, and you know. But see, the thing is, wear that long dress, and don't leave these other things undone. See, wear, that, wear those garments, because yes, Deuteronomy did say that you shouldn't dress what men wear. But do this, don't, but in that, don't leave these other things undone. Because, see, Adam and Eve, you know, they 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 had the same nakedness that they had whether they were innocent or guilty but the difference in that same nakedness when they became guilty that nakedness switched the neck the meaning of nakedness changed the diagram was utterly destroyed you see and i think walking upon rocks and and walking upon you know the earth with bare feet see what i'm saying and i'm th and i think about how you know but at the same time he said cursed is the earth i guess the earth wasn't cursed yet so so you know everything was meant for us to be you know um as adam and eve but now for now we all must wear garments your garments must be unspotted from this world if you're now going to wear garments. You understand? Because a lot of us were also putting on those self-righteous garments, which are the fig leaves. Okay? You understand? And you still, and you still know the Lord. And you still know the Lord, but you're right, but your garments are fig leaves. You understand? Your garments need to be God's garments. If since you're now converted, you see, because you're not no no longer that naked person in sin. You see what I'm saying? So now, don't put on. Because see, that's what those Pharisees were doing. Those Pharisees that were believers, they 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 were. And, and I'm gonna even call out Paul, Peter rather. Peter, when he was afraid of the Jews, he was putting on fig leaves again, and he already had the garments of of leather. Okay, he already had that. Jesus already was that sacrifice slain before the foundations of the earth. Okay, before the foundations of the world, Jesus was already that same sacrifice that was that beast that clothed Adam and Eve that we don't have that much knowledge of. Jesus was already that sacrifice. 
of our self-righteousness, okay? Because our righteousness was as a, a menstrual rag, you understand? Our righteousness was as a menstrual rag, okay? okay? Our righteousness. But then he clothed us in the garments of praise, in the garments of salvation, okay? You understand? And so, you know, now that we have these garments, we cannot take these garments off because we're so high-minded and overly righteous and put on, you know, these other garments. You see what I'm saying? Which are fig leaves and things of that nature. Because that's when it's all about just covering yourself. You see? But, but you know, he don't want you just to be covered only. Because even Adam and Eve covered themselves. You see what I'm saying? You see, listen to these people out here who have a name for themselves. Do they talk like this? Because they might talk about garments, but do they, you, you, you hear the Spirit? Do you hear the Holy Ghost? See what I'm saying? Because they might give you the outer, but they're not going to give you the inner. They're going to give you the skin of the peach, the ceramic, and I'm not saying that I'm better, but, but the Holy Ghost is trying to say more. You understand? See, Apollos had things to say, but the Holy Ghost wanted to do more. You understand? And I'm not here for you to choose between Apollos, between Peter, I mean, between Paul, on none of these things, but we have to come higher. We're in the last days. You understand? We don't need to be thinking that we are all right. So, so what you hear me preach in my gospel that I preach, which is of Jesus Christ, do all these things that Jesus Christ says while leaving these other things undone. Okay? Because some people expect for you to leave these other things undone, but they don't talk about it. And what are these other things? These other things are not placing our righteousness on the garments. Okay, Render your heart and not your garments. You understand? Render your heart and not your garments. I don't want to take up too much of your time. I already did already. But this is a mighty word because these are the same people who God is not looking at with any uh, righteousness at all. He's looking at them in the sense of knowledge puffeth up. Okay. But love didn't even edify. Did you go to her? Did you tell her? Okay. Because telling somebody online, you know, that's cool. But did you tell her? See what I'm saying? This was our sister. Did you tell them? See what I'm saying? And somebody might say, oh, well, you need to, oh, what about Bram Bram? Well, listen, she got 14,000. She calls herself a leader. This is somebody who needs to give rebuke openly. Plus, me and her talked before, okay, why, way back. That's why she told you in the video that she took down that, you know, he probably was rebuking me about this and that. She didn't even look at the video yet and didn't even know that I wasn't even coming for her about her marriage, even though I did in the past because they weren't ever married and you shouldn't be around people yet you're not married to. See what I'm saying? You know, living with him and stuff. He's still talking about, no, it's God. I don't want to hear it, you know, and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, you know what I'm saying? Um, praise God for Brand Brand. I love her as a sister still. You know what I'm saying? I believe she's still a woman of God. You know what I'm saying? Praise God. You know, uh, I'm not angry. I hope you look at this video, Brand Brand. I'm not angry. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm not angry with anybody. I'm not angry with nobody. You know what I'm saying? I'm not even angry with myself right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, um, but anyway, thank you, Jesus. Hey, Chloe, I don't have to look with you in the eyes Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I judge not even myself. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, listen. Uh, so, I want you guys to grow from this. I want you guys to go further in this. You know, um, but yes, uh, you know, within the body of Christ, we are to reach these people. Go to these people. Speak to these people. Uh, 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 especially if they're, you know, you know, especially if they're showing that they're not willing to uh, continue to be contentious. Okay. And um, and um, and um, don't be overly righteous. I have to say that again. Don't be overly righteous because you're not going to go to heaven that way. And uh, is there anything else I need to say? Okay, I already told you Philippians uh, 3.15. Okay. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. All right, well, man, I'm out, man. God bless you. I love you. You know, um, Jesus Christ is Lord. We are in the end times. 
We don't even know when anything is going to kick off. We can set dates. We can do this. We can do that. God is still saying this time and you can still repent. Okay? Jesus ain't even going to come back until the gospel is finished getting preached. With that being said, I mean, you know, there's going to be people out here getting destroyed by locusts with the hair of women in the face of men and the body of horses and tails of serpents and scorpions and you know Jesus still ain't gonna come back until the gospel's finished being preached. You know what I mean? So 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 you know what I mean just be open. We don't know how all things might pan out. So you know, as scripture says, judge nothing before it's time. God bless you.